Hi guys! Okay, so I am still grabbing my materials. I know I was trying to do it earlier today, but um, it uh, it didn't work out as planned. So I'm actually going to... I'm still working on my setup here too. Uh, but I, I know I said 8 o'clock, so I'm trying to make sure I at least get it on the dot here. So, okay, I'm going to grab more materials. We'll go over what you need. Oh, it's got to be in here somewhere. Okay. Here it is. I have my bags of fabric here, and uh, yeah, I know I said I was going to do it earlier today. Um, I'm pretty sure it's in here, though. I like to keep all of my scrap fabric. Let's see. Mm, yeah, well, I'm going to need some of this black fabric anyway. Let's see. Of course it's not in here. Um, it's, what I'm looking for is the skirt fabric. I have the fabric for the bodice and everything like that, but I'm looking for the skirt fabric right now. Nope. All right, um, I'm going to keep digging around uh, one sec. Sorry, guys. There's only so many places the fabric can be. <laughs> check in here. We'll make it fun. I've got this ridiculously large lollipop. Uh, no, that's not, it's not going to be in here. I'm streaming. I'm streaming. I'm streaming. Oh, sorry. Okay. Not that one. Another project. Okay, let's see what's in here. Woo. Oh, okay. Oh man. No, it's not that one. Thank you guys for being patient with me. I will find it. I just got back from being out for a little bit. Oh, here it is. Okay, I put it. I put it right where I needed it to be for easy access, and then I still uh, forgot where it was. Okay. Cool. Uh, right here. Okay. So here is my project bag. So first off, whenever I make anything, whether I make a jumper skirt for myself or if I make a dress or anything like that, I always do this thing where I make project bags. And the project bag is like I buy all the materials, like the zipper and every little thing I need for it. Even sometimes like I'll put the thread and the buttons in here. And um, I just I keep them in these little clear bags so I can I know when I pick it up it's got most of everything I need in it. This one. I knew I had a, I, that I had a lot of black fabric, so I'd be able to, um, I know I'd be able to get what I needed for it. Oh my gosh, I had a lot of black fabric. Okay. But this has like the skirt fabric and all that other stuff in it. Oh good, I've got some interfacing here. We're going to need interfacing. So if you're working on your own thing or if you're just here to tune in, um, most jumper skirts have a little bit of interfacing in it. So. 
what I'm going to do is periodically I'm going to switch the way that the camera is set up so you guys can see like when I'm cutting the fabric and laying it out on the table and all that stuff. First I'm just going to show you guys the materials I have for this. So it's Mystic Night Carnival. This is a um, series that was never released through Truly Darling. Um, but I, I bought all the fabric to make the sample so I thought it'd be cool to make it. It's on this same sort of satiny, like soft fabric that I made Aurora Valentine with. So I'll just show you guys really fast if anyone hasn't seen Aurora Valentine. I should have it in here somewhere. Okay. I think I actually, yeah, there it is. Okay, good, it's right in the front. This was uh, one that I'd made last year, I think it was, and this is the same sort of fabric. So uh, underneath the overlay, you can see it's this very pretty satiny fabric. I got it on Spoonflower if you want your own custom fabric. It's one of the cheaper ones, so I really like it, but I, because for Lolita, I'm not like a huge fan of satiny fabrics, unless it's got some kind of overlay to kind of... Um, so it just doesn't look so intense, you know? So I'm going to do something very similar where I put an overlay on the Mystic Night Carnival uh, jumper skirt. Okay. Close that up. Alright. So. So I've got my skirt fabric. And I've got... What else do I have in here? Okay, good. I bought all the lining a while ago, too. So it's just plain black kind of shiny lining fabric and then I've got the rest of the skirt fabric over here as well Ooh, my food yes I'm getting my food I'm still laying out my fabrics and all that so I'm having my dinner while I'm doing that thank you okay so on, on top of needing your skirt fabric and all that other fun stuff you are gonna need a pair of these and these are the kinds of scissors that have the little teeth. And this is good when you're working with like, like these silky fabrics. You can see I already cut along the edge there with it. And it keeps it from getting frayed. So I'm trying not to eat too close to my, my uh, skirt or my fabric. Okay, that's got to cool down anyway. I also have my needles all my pins and needles and this is on a, a magnetic holder I'm definitely gonna need that I got a pencil I'm gonna need that and I got my regular scissors and these are also like they're pretty good they're Westcott titanium scissors I like these because um, I've gone through a lot of pair of scissors throughout the four years that I did truly darling um, they're like the number one thing that goes a lot so get a high quality pair of scissors all right, so now I'm gonna pick out um, the overlay fabric. Uh, let's see. And the bodice fabric too. So the thing is about this dress, I think, uh, well, this one's a pretty big section of it, so. Oh yeah, yeah, can you just put it right there? Yeah. Can you feel? Um, so this is a pretty big section of fabric that's pretty plain, and I might use that one. I'm just, I'm trying to, uh, Find. You want your textures and materials and stuff to be not too different. Let's see. Whoa. Okay. Okay. And then for over my skirt, I'm either I had the choice of either chiffon or mesh. And for me, what I did for Aurora Valentine was I used mesh, and I think I'm going to use mesh again because it doesn't like chiffon can be really opaque but mesh can be very not opaque like you can see right through it really and I want that because I just basically want to slightly dull the fabric you know you don't want it to be like super shiny or anything so I'm getting my scraps for the mesh oh I basically just have like scrap leftovers that I can use and what we're gonna do is uh, I'll show you guys kind of how to salvage what you have hopefully I've got enough to do it Alright, so now we're going to 
I'm going to set up the camera so you guys can watch me actually cut out the pieces for the fabric. Or, or for the, so you guys can watch me actually cut out the, uh, the different pieces, like the skirt fabric and all that other fun stuff. So, I'm going to put, what is this one? It's very shiny on the inside. Oh, it is, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is going to double, I bought a lot of this because this is also going to be part of the, there's going to be an open princess bustle in the front. So I bought a lot of that. So we're going to start with the easy stuff. We're going to start with cutting the skirt fabric. I'm going to put my other fabric over here. Okay. And we're going to set up the, I'm going to reset up the camera. Now the one thing is my table is black and the fabric is black, so it's going to be a little hard to see. Um, but hopefully it'll it'll come out well. Okay, let me. Excuse me one second while I take my, I'm taking my phone out of there, the case so I can set it up. All right. Okay. Hopefully that's good. Okay, so here's my fabric. And I got just a little bit. I didn't get uh, two yards. Normally I recommend you get two yards. Did I get two yards or three yards? I'm not sure. I'll just measure it now and I'll tell you guys. So, oh yeah, another really cool thing. So if you're designing your own fabric and you're getting it done on Spoonflower, the way you want to design it is like this, where basically you've got your print on one side. Hold on. You got your print on this side, and then you have your print long ways on this side too. Okay? So yeah, it looks like I just got one yard of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tuck the one side in here. I'm going to measure everything. Always just, like, it's been so long since I've touched this fabric, so always just remeasure your fabric when, before you start on the project. And I have, like, a little sample piece, too, and I'll measure that, too, to see if, if I can add it to my skirt. Let's see. So this is 35 and a quarter. Okay, so both sides are going to be 35 and a quarter. What I do is I have the pencil nearby so I can write down these numbers. So each side is 35.25. Now this is not enough to make a, a Lolita skirt with flare. You want to watch out for that. And this is why this is a, let's see, this is only 70 inches. So a 70 inch flare is very small. You might see something like that with an Alice in the Pirate style dress or something like that. Um, those tend to be really restrictive. So we're going to see if the the little sample fabric that I also have is enough to add in. But actually, I think what I was originally going to do is I'm just going to put the bustle in to make up for the rest of that. Because I don't want it to look off. Let's see. Yeah, this is 17 and a half. I might be able to do it in three parts, but let's see if it's even enough. 17 and a half. So add that. Eight. Eight. Okay, so 88 is closer to what you'd want to look for. So you want to look for a range between 88 and 120, depending on your bust and waist size. For me, I have about a 26-inch waist, so an 88-inch skirt is, like, minimum what I could get away with. Like, ideally, I like a 90 to 100-inch skirt, but it's not necessary. So if I decided I didn't want to put a bustle in the front, I could do that. So it's good to know I have that option. <laughs> But for now, I'm going to, I want to plan around kind of doing it as if it's going to have a bustle because I really just, I have like a vision for it. And it doesn't matter how, because of the yardage that I have, it doesn't matter how I cut it. In the end, it'll still be, um, you know, I can do that later. 
I can do that later. I can do that later. Oh, okay. That's fine. It's just loud. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Anyway, so. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter how this gets cut because it's not going to be one continuous skirt anyway. It's going to have... Um, it's going to have to get sewn together anyway because each section is only 35 inches long. So the other thing is I want it to be a long waist kind of... I want it to be like a longer length. So I'm actually going to take another dress I own and I'm going to measure it, the one that actually is the length that I like, and then that way I'll have like a template to kind of go off of because... I don't have a, a lot of long length dresses, but um, yeah, I'm going to grab one real fast and we'll bring it over here and we'll measure it and see uh, what kind of skirt length we are, we're, we're looking for. Okay. So, one of my favorite dresses, you might have seen this in my Graveyard Girl parody video that was really ridiculous. Um, this is Sonnet for Juliet. I have the OP version and it's a, the long length version. So this is a great starting place to figure out how long that this skirt is because this is longer than a regular Lolita skirt and that's what we're going for is sort of a, I think it's called like a T-length um, Lolita dress. So it's a longer length dress. So I'm going to measure it. Oh, this is perfect. You guys can see almost <laughs> all of it. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to measure it from the top and it looks like it's about... So a regular Lolita skirt is about 22 inches long, sometimes a little shorter, sometimes a little longer, but around 20, like average, it's about 22 inches. This one is uh, 27 and a half, and if we add in the, uh, the area that needs to get sewn, like the salvage or whatever, it's probably closer to 28. So that's what we're going to look for trying to achieve lengthwise before cutting the skirt fabric for Missing Hank Carnival. Oopsie daisy. Okay. So I'm going to take note of that as well. And we're looking for a 28 inch skirt length. Okay. And now I'm going to take this and just fold it in half because it'll be the same on both sides. And I just need to measure once that way because my table is not quite long enough to do that anyway. So I'm going to fold it up so you guys can see what I'm measuring. Okay. So the fabric actually ends here. I know it's it's uh, black. I'll put this under there so you guys can see. Okay. Okay. So from the top edge of this, it's about 26. Mm. Okay, it's about... 26 and a quarter, and if we add a little bit of salvage, it's the most I could get out of it is 26 and a half. So that's what we're going to have to go for. It might not be quite the, the T length, 26.5. And that's something you can always um, check before you get your fabric printed. Some of them are 48, uh, like the fabric you get printed on spoon flower, it's either 48 inches or it'll be a 52 inch length. And I think this might be one of the, let's see if it's 26. It's the longer length. This actually is like the 52 inch length. So this is probably the most you could get out of the fabric anyway. So the longest T length jumper skirt you could make with a spoon flower dress, unless the, the, you have an option of doing it longer than 52 inches, if you decide to design and get your fabric cut in the way that I do it, would be about a 26 inch skirt. So, and that's a, accommodating for salvage. So that's what we're going to go for. I think that'll still be long enough. That's that's longer than an average one by a few inches, so I think it'll still look cute. And there's some room in making it uh, look longer if you have a longer, like, bust, um, a bodice, you know? Not a longer bust. If you have a longer bodice. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and cut this, and it's important that you don't just, like with my spoon flower fabric, I don't want to just leave it folded when I cut it and just cut along the fold because it's not actually level. If you can see here, these don't line up, and if I were to just cut it the way it is, I would have a major issue with the lengths on both sides, 
So what I actually want to do is I'm going to lay it out like this and I'm going to line it up with pins. We're going to pin it and then we're going to, um, I actually should turn my iron on so I can recut it or so I can re-iron it before I cut it. So I'm going to plug my iron in. And uh, a big a big process of making anything, making sewing Lolita or anything like that is is using your iron along the way. And that was something that it took me a while to kind of learn, was that you really need to use your iron intermittently throughout the process. Okay, so I'm getting my ironing board. We're gonna use this in a minute. Okay. I wish I could play music, but I can't play any music because I'm, you know, I don't want to get any kind of copyright strike on music, you know. So, unfortunately, I don't, I can't play any music. Okay, so what I'm doing, I don't know if you guys can, I'm actually gonna scoot it over for you so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm lining up these little, these little notches here. And I'm, and the fabric is a little bit, it's, it's pretty opaque, but you can, it's a little bit translucent, so you can kind of see where it doesn't line up. And by the way, if you ever have any issues with your spoon flower fabric, if you let them know, like, if they didn't print it properly, they will give you, um, a chance to get completely new fabric. Like, they will resend you your fabric, which is great. Um, as long as it's there fault and not yours like it's not a design issue on your fault on your end as long as it's something like they just printed it wrong you can get new fabric so if you ever have are worried that you know they're going to make a printing error or something like that i had a um i had some fabric come in once that had some like black track marks all over it like along the middle of the the, the important design part and i told them about it and they gave me new fabric which was great because the fabric that I have is pretty much not usable. So, okay, so now I'm just... Hopefully you guys can see that. Okay, so we're pinning it. And the iron you want to leave at about like a three or four because this is synthetic fabric and if you're using something like synthetics you don't want to risk it uh, burning. It gets all wrinkly so you don't want to risk that. Okay. Yeah, I made the mistake before of not lining this up and just cutting along where the fold line was that it was originally given to me by when Spoonflower uh, folded it up and sent it to me, and I just, it was not good, so. Okay, so this is pinned, and now I'm going to double check it by holding it up to the light. Okay. Okay, we're all good. So, now I'm going to get my iron out, now that we've pinned it. As you can see, like it's along the bottom here, it's definitely not even. So you don't want to, that's even, like when the, the blue lines are lined up. Okay. Okay, so this ironing board cover I actually made myself. And if you ever have leftover jersey fabric or anything like that, if you're ever doing a project with jersey fabric, it's great to be able to make yourself a new ironing board cover. It's like very easy. So I, I highly recommend it. Okay, so now we're gonna just re-iron the, the fold line here. Okay, and hopefully this new fold line that I've made will be good to just cut along. 
And the reason why I do it this way is because it saves me time on measuring and things like that. And the thing I've learned over the years of making Lolita is um, the dresses are very detailed, they're very complicated, and having any sort of little shortcut that doesn't uh, take away from the, the, the project, like the end result, um, they're great, you know, great little tips and tricks and things you can use, uh, so I highly recommend that. Because honestly, if the fabric looks the same on both sides, there's no reason to, to sit there and, even if you do measure it, I, I can tell you right now, like, I've had issues where I've measured the fabric and I still didn't cut it straight or something like that, so... I have to replug in my Okay. So I'm going to re-measure it again just to see what my length is now. It should be about the same. It should be the 26 inches, but I just want to make sure. Okay. Yeah, now it's 26 and a half. I could definitely probably get 27 out of it. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this little edge off the bottom here with my, because we're not going to need to, well, actually I'm not going to use these for it because I want to make sure when I, when I surge it and I sew it down, it's, it's not going to be um, with the crinkle cut scissors or whatever they're called. So we're just going to use your reg our regular scissors, and I'm just going to cut this little excess off because it's not really needed. And what you want to do when you cut the excess off uh, is don't cut it don't cut it right to the black here. Even though this was originally made for if I wanted to do shorter length ones, I could fold this up and there wouldn't be an issue with the seam. But since I'm going for a longer length, I actually want what I f my hem to uh, that gets folded up to be white, so we get more length out of it. Okay, so I'm going to cut that. I'm just moving my pins so I've got plenty of room to do that. Okay. And you want to leave about a quarter of an inch. If you're really not sure, don't you chew on that thread? Get out of here. My cat is like messing with stuff. Okay, so there's the leftover. And we can just throw that away. It's not really necessary to keep. Okay. So if you're not really sure of yourself, you can go ahead and leave a full half inch. Oh, hold on. I got comments. Sorry, guys. I'm. This is my first time YouTube streaming. Okay. <laughs> watching the stream and doing your homework and watching a movie at the same time. That's how I do most of my stuff. I usually multitask everything. When I used to do alterations, I would just watch movies while I would seam rip because the seam ripping alone would take so long. I could, I could sit and watch like two episodes of, of something and, uh, you know, or like a few movies or something before I'd finish with it. Okay. So now... Oh, wait, we don't want to take our pins out yet. Huh? We want to make sure it stays lined up so I can cut that top part there. So the reason why I got such a small amount of fabric is because normally, like I, I'd, I'd said earlier, I don't recommend getting something like one yard to make a Lolita dress with. But the reason why I only got one yard is because it basically is just black satin at the top here. And that means you can go and get black satin to make your bodice from something like Joann's and because this fabric is about $20 a yard and you don't want to spend $20 a yard for fabric that like isn't even doesn't have a print on it or something like that so the what I ended up doing was I just bought enough fabric to make the skirt part and therefore you don't need as much because if you're making a full dress you probably want about two yards 
for a jumper skirt and three yards for an OP. You can sometimes get away with only two yards for a jumper skirt, or sorry, two yards for a, a, a one piece, but it's, you gotta, you know, you gotta know your measurements and you gotta know how much you're gonna get out of the fabric and just, it's a lot of pre-measuring before ordering. Okay, so now I'm just cutting it along this new created uh, seam line that I made. Or I guess not a seam line. The new created uh, crease. Okay. Awesome. Now we've got our two halves of our skirt. And there's a few different ways I can go about doing this. And in order to not uh, lessen the skirt width, what I'm actually going to do is... Um, this will be one side, and then the other side here is going to be the other side of the skirt. And what that means is it's going to be a little weird in the way that there's going to be a seam in the back, but there is uh, right here in the middle. Here, see if I, let me see if I can lay it out and explain it to you guys. Because what we're doing here is, or what I'm doing is a bustle jumper skirt. I know this like sounds advanced, but it's really not. We're just we're just making another panel that's going to go in it. So basically, what I mean is this right here will be the back seam. And it doesn't matter because it's going to have that mesh overlay, so you're not really going to see it. And that's the only reason why I'm doing that way. Okay, and then this, as you can see, these are going to be the sides here. So now what we have is we've got right here in the middle, this is where we're going to put in that, that princess bustle. So that we're only going to need the one seam in the back. And yeah, we're just going to have a little princess bustle in the front. So that's a totally separate thing when we get to making that. But now we've got our two pieces cut. And that's really good. So you want to fold that up and set that off to the side. Silky fabric like this, I try to keep it folded not too many times over. But I definitely make sure I don't crumple it and throw it off to the side because you're going to iron it a lot later. And it's going to be hectic. Okay. And when you go ahead and you make, when you go ahead and you cut your lining fabric, you don't need to do the same thing for that because the lining fabric can just be one continuous piece. It doesn't need to have the whole bustle inserted into it. So it's not as, it's not gonna have to be three parts. It'll just be two. The same for the, um, for the, um, the mesh. So next I'm going to pick out my bodice material and I, what I want to do is I'm kind of trying to lay them out and see if they look good together or they feel good together. I don't have many options so it shouldn't be too hard to decide. I have like a plain cotton, which I don't recommend. You don't want to use something like a plain cotton if you're even with the satin, because mixing those kinds of materials can be a little odd. I personally like to use a poly crepe machine for the bodice, and it's either that or I like to use a matching satin of some sort. Let's see what I've got. I have some velvet. I have some velvet too, but I don't know. It's just so, it's such a different shade of black in comparison. It looks super black compared to that, so I don't think that would be a good choice. Okay, I think I'm just gonna go with, I think we're gonna go with this. This seems to be the best option. So what this is, is, is a, a thick sort of satin fabric. It has a, a, a non-shiny side and a bit of a shiny side. And I'm actually gonna, hmm, I'm gonna go ahead and do it with the shiny side, I think. It doesn't really matter because once I cut the pieces, I can always just, before I sew it, I can change it around if I don't like it. Now I'm gonna get my, my uh, pattern pieces out. Okay. And a uh, fun tip. 
I like to use materials um, that are not just paper. I know this is probably not good that I did this, but what I use is I use that Tyvek, whatever it's called, the stuff that they make mailing envelopes, just because these pattern pieces don't, they won't break apart or fall apart like uh, regular paper would. I recommend if you can find a big roll of this, this sort of um, stuff that they make the envelopes out of, and I would highly recommend making your pattern pieces with this. So, okay, I'm not going to do a sweetheart product. I'm going to pick out my pieces now. And what I do is I labeled each one of these. So I'm going to do a, a baby doll style cut top for it, so it's going to be shorter. It's going to be very much like an Alice in the Pirates style dress. That's what I'm kind of going for. Oh, it's baby doll cut. Hmm. I'm going to keep both these off to the side. That's the back piece. So jumper skirts are really nice in the way that they're just very simple. There's not very many pieces you need for it. I have a thousand pieces in here because I just have made so many things. Okay. Okay, so here's a good example too if you're doing two different styles of bodices. Oh, I've got some really weird art in here. Hold on. Okay. So one style. So you can see the size difference of these. And this one is accommodating for pleats. So if you have a dress that, or I guess like piping or whatever it's called, where it, you make a little, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's just, it's piping. Or pleating or whatever. I, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm blanking right now. This is one without that. And I think um, for this style one, it's just going to be the plain style bodice. So I'm going to go ahead and put that one off to the side. I'm also going to do, hmm, I haven't decided if I'm going to do a, a full uh, shirred back panel or not. It's a little easier to do a full, fully shirred back panel, but I think I might do one that's only a quarter or partial because I'm just making it for me. So, so many pieces. Okay, I think I have the ones I need. For your bodice, you're gonna need interfacing. So make sure you got some interfacing. I like to get um, the large amount instead of just getting it cut by the yard because you always end up needing interfacing, so it's always good to have a lot of it. All right, I'm gonna put these other pattern pieces away. And no pattern piece is perfect. You might find that you need to tweak it afterwards. I, I have worked out a lot of kinks with these, so they're pretty good. Let's see. It's going to have to be that one. Not this one. This one is not going to fit, I don't think. Okay, so then that'll be the back piece. So as you can see, this is basically half of it, and then we'll put that piece there, and then it'll be the other half. Okay. I'm gonna actually iron this a little bit as well. It just, it looks a little wrinkly and I think it would be best to, okay. Ok, 
Okay, so I'm just ironing the fabric I'm going to use for the bodice because I just want to make sure that I don't have any issues with cutting it and then one side is bigger than the other, things like that. It's not that wrinkly. The great thing about this fabric is as much as I've thrown it around and all that, it doesn't seem to be that wrinkly. It wrinkles far less than like straight up like lining fabric. Okay, and actually for this, I'm going to, um, okay. I'm actually going to move the fabric over to my pink table because you can actually see what I'm doing on the pink table better. So I'm going to do that and let me just set this up really fast so you guys can see what I'm doing. have to move a few things around. I have a piano on this table right now. <laughs> you want to get in your carrier on it? Okay. Here's my food. I'll move my this as well so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna lay out my fabric. So the thing is, this is a slightly smaller table, so we'll see. There we go. Alright, here's our fabric. And our pieces. Make sure that that's the right piece because that looks a little bit short. I have a, a lot of different um, bodice pieces, so sometimes they look the same and it's hard to make sure I have the right one. This says it's front side, but that's for medium. Front bodice, side piece. Maybe it's that one. I'm going to leave that out there anyway. And actually, okay. I'm actually going to go look for the original concept sketch for this because it's important to make sure that I'm not forgetting what it looks like. Hello. I'm pretty sure it's in this, this folder. Sorry. Sorry for the low angle, guys. <laughs> okay. All right, let's take a look for this. I designed the dress like a year or two ago now and I've been really wanting to make it it's not that hard it's a pretty simple dress so I'm very, I'm very excited about it here it is yay okay so here is the design 
it's going to have like these pretty flyaway sleeves that I think they're just going to be um, removable. And it just has a plain black bodice. Okay, yeah. Now I remember. <laughs> hmm. Now I got to figure out which one of these is going to best suit that. But it's just very simple. I might actually have an OP bodice that will work really well for that. So I'm going to dig through these pattern pieces again and we're going to see if we can find a good one. Yeah, I, I'm sorry guys, I was really wanting to be prepared with all my pieces before I started streaming, but I just didn't have time. The saddle pet. I've got everything in here. I've got saddle pet like pattern pieces everything and if you guys want um copies of any of these pattern pieces or anything like that just uh let me know and i will see about doing something like that perhaps uh uploading them or something the ones that'll fit i think that you could actually like print out onto a piece of paper or something like a eight and a half by eleven waste. Hmm. You know what, I could probably just get away with a baby, a baby doll style cut. got a lot of duplicates in here too. <laughs> Things that are like I perfected it later. No, that's a, this is one of those like Elodie doll style uh, bodices. Oh, hold on. I got comments. <laughs> um, so the overlay isn't going to be over the bustle. Um, no, it's not. So the overlay is actually going to be, it, the overlay is going to end where the bustle starts. So I'm going to be figuring <laughs> that part out. Um, that's if I still opt to do the bustle, because when I'm looking at it here in my original design, I don't have a bustle. And um, it was sort of a last minute thing. I was like, well, it would look really cute with one and I don't have enough fabric. So it's also, it's a great way to save money too so if you're ever wanting to get custom fabric printed and you don't want to worry about it um so yeah it really just depends it depends on if i go ahead and do the bustle i'm pretty sure i will and if i do yeah typically the rule would be you, you don't want it to go over top because it's going to cover all the pretty lace and all the pretty ruffles you put on your your front bustle so it would just kind of end right where the, the it would open and uh also let's see I had another comment on here um, from Manga12. Thank you for saying uh, mad respect. It is very hard. Um, and anyone who sews or does DIY stuff, I, they know. Let's see. I do woodwork myself and can't draw, though, very well. Uh, yeah, uh, Manga12, it is, it is hard. It's interesting, though, you do woodwork. That's cool. Like, I, know, I have a friend who does wood burning, and I always found that to be pretty cool. Um, uh, in terms of boning, this dress will not have any boning. Um, it is very basic sort of dress, so we don't have to worry about anything like that. I know that there are some ones that do have boning, like, uh, there are some, like, Alice in the Pirates dresses and things like that that do. But this one doesn't really need it. Okay, so... No, I don't think that one's going to work. So we're just going to go ahead and go with the uh, the pieces I found. I mean, these are these are interchangeable enough. It doesn't really matter. So 
I'm going to go ahead with Let's see. We're going to go ahead with the long bodice. Because the thing is, like, I'm not 100% wow. But look at this. The long bodice and the middle drop bodice are almost the same length. The drop waist bodice. So I'm going to go ahead with the longer length. Because if I decide that I don't want it to be uh, a regular, if I want it to be like a baby doll cut bodice, I can always just cut it into a baby doll cut bodice, like a baby doll style bodice later. It's not a big deal. I'm going to go with this one, though. Okay. So, got my pattern pieces. I'm just going to fold this up a little bit because to make sure that these line up here. Because this is typically for a slightly shorter bodice. And we're going to cut we're going to cut two of these. We're going to cut one of these and we're going to cut two of these and then I'll show you how to do the shirring panel. to weight this down so it doesn't slide off the table. I'm going to start in the corner. I like to um, use as much of my fabric as I can and, uh, you know, save as much as I can. Wood burning takes time, uh, just too much. It oh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. Stained glass is cool. I haven't done anything like that in years. One sec, I was just taking a little food break. Okay. So I'm going to start with my squares piece. And we're going to go ahead and cut right here in the corner. I'm trying to scoot it over so you guys can see it. Okay. So with darker color fabrics, you can use things like chalk pencils. And that way you don't have to pin anything. But let's see. Okay, good. I do have chalk. I was about to say, but I don't have any chalk. Okay, I do have chalk. Good. I have really old chalk, too. I don't I don't even know where this came from. It's like a hand-me-down from, like, relatives. Okay. So, go ahead and make sure your fabric is flat as you can get it. Try to weight it down and anchor it down so you, it's not moving around while you're marking with the chalk. I'm going to make those uh, flyaway sleeves out of uh, probably the same mesh that I'm going to use for the skirt overlay. But I might actually use chiffon since they will be detachable, but we'll see. Okay, so we've got that now outlined. I'm going to grab a different piece of chalk. We're going to outline our next piece. And there's no, um, like, rhyme or reason for, like, what direction you have to do this. If you want to go down the, the piece of fabric like this, if you want to go long ways or short ways. Oh, yeah, that's true. I, I took a woodshop class once, and, you know... But I, I personally don't even have that much experience with it. I, I can imagine it's it probably has its same difficulties as sewing does because, you know, with sewing, like, once you cut the fabric, you've cut it, you know, and, it, it, yeah, you can sew it back together, but it, if you cut it in the wrong place, it's not always the same. And I'm sure when working with wood, it can be probably very similar, you know, if something breaks or something like that, like you were saying, um, then it's that's it. I actually, my friend who, um, who wood burns, 
we were doing a like a show together, like a festival together, and one of her pieces fell off the table, and it was a wood burning piece that she'd done on like a nice piece of a, uh, I don't remember what it was, like just on this very nice large piece of wood, and it just broke right in half, and like. <laughs> Luckily, it was a nice and clean break, no splinters, so she could actually glue it back together if she wanted to. But the fact that it just, like, fell off the table and broke into, like, two pieces was, like, wow. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we've got that piece done. Now, because this fabric is not the same on both sides, you want to make sure you mirror this. You don't want to, I've made this mistake many times, but if you have a fabric that's not the same on both sides, you want to make sure you mirror what you're uh, going to be cutting. Because otherwise you're going to end up with two of the same exact side that uh, where the fabric is completely different. And it's a problem, especially if you, if you got very limited fabric cuts and things like that.